Hello guys and welcome back to Planet 40k. We're on the 8th of December of our countdown to Christmas. Of course we're doing daily videos till Christmas Eve for a Tyranids and Necrons theme. So if you miss any of this series so far there'll be a playlist down below somewhere on the channel and you can get back to the 1st of December and catch up. There's of course a giveaway ongoing and what else is new? That's it really for today and we're not going to plug everything every day. That'd be too much. Today we're going to be looking at 8 tips to kill a Catan if you're playing Tyranids. Now we're first going to go over some of the, you know, the basic stuff for the actual Catan. We're then going to do some Math Hammer from some of the Tyranid units that you would expect to be, you know, the ones that are decent at doing, dealing damage and killing stuff. We're going to go through some maths. And then I'm going to give you the 8 tips that I believe are the best ways to kill the Catan. So, let's get into it. So of course we're using this Tyranid Codex, we are going up against the Catan. There's four different Catans, we've got the Transcendent Catan, we've got the Void Dragon, the Nightbringer, as well as the Deceiver. So you'll see their images as we go through the video. Now their basic stat line is a movement of 6 inches, it has been slightly nerfed there in terms of movement. Toughness 11, 4 plus arm with a 4 plus minimal save, 12 wounds, leadership 6 plus and OC is 4. Although the Deceiver has OC6, so watch out for that one. That will be a, a little bit of a play, I believe, when the Codex has come out. And they've got a Fiona Pain Table of a 5 plus as well. They're all characters, but they can't take enhancements. The Transcendent Catan, even though it isn't an epic hero, can't take enhancements. But they've got the Necrodermis ability, which allows them to half the damage characteristic of all weapons coming against them. So if you've got damage 6, it becomes damage 3. Damage 2 comes become damage 1. If you've got an odd number like damage 3, it will round up. So that will benefit the tuner player. So damage 3 would become damage 2. So it goes to 1.5, round it up to 2. That's one of the tips. So let's start this video off. We'll start it small. We're going to go with 20 Hermagons. Just to kind of give us a little level, a little idea of how they fare against a Catan. So with a melee weapon, you've got the Hormagon Talons, 3 attacks each. Of course, with 20 of them, that's 60 attacks, hitting on 4s. Strength 3, minus 1 AP, 1 damage. So with your 60 attacks, you're hitting on 4s, you're going to basically half, so that's 30 expected hits. Wounding on 6s because of toughness 11, you're only expecting 5 there. Basic maths there, 30 divided by 6 is 5. There's a 4 plus in runnable save, you're halving that again on an average, that's 2.5. And then he's got a 5 plus for no pain save, so on average you're expecting 1.65 damage from an entire 20 blob of Hormagons, and that's providing they can all get in and fight. Which they probably can't, let's be honest. So that's not the answer. They are not the answer. Next we've got some Gene Sealers. We've got 10 Gene Sealers, and I'm going to put a Broodlord in there as well. So the Gene Sealers have got the ability to be able to reroll hit rolls of a 1. They can also do reroll wound rolls of a 1 if your opponent is on an objective marker. That isn't always the case, so we're not going to use the re-rolls of 1 to wound in this maths. But that could be something you could use later on, but we definitely will be re-rolling 1s to hit. And the Brood Lord provides devastating wounds for the unit. So the Gene Stealers, they've got the Gene Stealer Claws and Talons. 4 attacks each, which would make 40 attacks in total, providing they're all in. They're hitting on 2s, strip 4, minus 2 AP, 1 damage. So again, you can see from these graphs here, 40 attacks. Hitting on two, three, rolling ones, that's 38.89. You're basically getting almost all your attacks hit there. You're wounded on sixes, but sixes deal mortals because of devastating wounds, so that's why it just says expected zero. It will get lumped into the next section, which is the feel no pain. They're all one damage. You can't half one damage, so one damage is one damage. After the feel no pain, you're expecting 4.32 to go through. That's just the gene stealers alone. You've then got the broodlord with the broodlord claws and talons. This is the twin link weapon. Again, has devastating wounds. You've got... 5 attacks, hit on 2, strength 6, minus 2 AP, 2 damage, but that will go to 1 damage, of course, because halving damage. You're re-rolling 1s because of the unit roll with the Gene Stealers, because the Brood Lord is part of that unit. So hits after re-rolls, 4.86. Wounded on 5, 6 is Immortals. It only shows 0.81 because the 5s will be put into this section, the 6s will be Dev Wounds, so they'll be put into the next one. It's just how this program works. So all in all, with the save of a 4+, plus, you're looking at 0.4, that's with the, the Wound Rolls of a 5. This is where it clumps back in together. After the Fiona Pain, you're looking at 0.81 in total. So when you combine that, what's that? 0.81 and 4.32, 5 point something damage. It's not enough. It's not enough. 
after a few turns it could be enough but you've got to bear in mind reanimation protocols which we're not going to really dive too much into in this video we want to try and hit hit and kill in one so I've noticed in the few of the videos we've done so far reanimation protocols has, has been a bit overpowered for two minutes so I'm trying to come away from that for a moment and we want to do it in one swoop but they can't do it five point whatever that is isn't enough when you've got 12 wounds next we've got the Tyrann effects the Tyrann effects I've done all the maths for all three Privately, the best one is the rupture cannon, so I'm only going to show you that. I'm not going to waste your time with the acid spray or the flesh spore hive. But the rupture cannon is heavy, so you hit on twos with it with two shots, hit on hit on twos, strength 18, minus 4 AP, 2d6 damage, which we will need to half, but we can only half it after we've rolled 2d6. So the actual chart here doesn't show the halving of damage because I can't I mean I could do it on average, I suppose. It'll just be like 1d6, but you don't know what you're gonna roll, so I've not put it in yet. So yeah, two shots, 1.67 hits, 1.1 wounds with a 3 plus the wound. Save of a 4 plus puts you on like 0.56. After the feel no pain save, you're looking at 2.59 damage, but then realistically you should be half in that. But even if you didn't, it's not enough. It's not enough. Swarm Lord and six Tyrant Guards, we're stepping it up a little bit here. Obviously this is going to cost us points. We've got a lot of different weapons here. The Swarm Lord has got the Synaptic Pulse at range and the bone sabers at, at, in a fight. But all in all, when you combine the Synaptic Pulse, which is a automatically hitting strength 5 minus 1 AP2 damage torrent weapon at range, if you add that to the bone sabers, which are twin linked, 8 attacks, hit on 2, strength 9 minus 2 AP3 damage, when you combine all that, do the feel no pains and all the invuns and all that, you're looking at 2.83 damage. That's just the Swarm Lord alone. Then when you do the same thing with the Tyrant Guard, you don't use the Bone the bone Cleaver, Lash Whip and Rending Claws, that does less, but the other two options, they're identical. They both do 1.1 damage from a unit of 6. So when you're combining that together, 3.94 as a combination from the unit, it's still not enough. You're kind of seeing the problem here, Katarms are just animals. They're absolute animals. Zone Thropes are another decent damage outlay, so let's go through both the weapons here. I think it's worth investigating both. Uh, Warp Blast, which is the standard Witchfire, it's got Blast, but that's not going to do anything theory, in theory. Six of them, that's 6 D3 attacks, hitting on 3, strength 7, minus 2 AP, D3 damage. We've got to half it later on, because D3, it could be, if you roll a 3, it'll become a 2, but if you roll a 2, it becomes a 1, if you roll a 1, it becomes a 1. So it's it's more likely to be a 1 than a 2, but we'll leave it at that. So you're doing, well, with your 6 guys, you've got 12 expected on average shots. With the D3 each, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Out of that, you're hitting on 3, so you're expecting 8 to hit. Wounded on 5s, 2.67 wounds. Armor save gets involved, it's 1.33. And then after the feel no pain, 1.78, and then you've got to half it. Not enough. And the focus witch fire, which is the better weapon, I believe. Only one shot, but lethal hits. Hit on 3, strength 12, minus 3 AP, D6 plus 1 damage. 6 attacks. Hit on 3s, and 6 is also wounding. You're expecting. Four, but there is an auto wound there that has been put into the wound section. Again, this is just how the application works. So it will show four, but really there's five. One's a lethal. Wounded on threes, there's three in total now. That will include the lethal. With the four plus armor, it's 1.5 going through. And then D6 plus one damage when you're shaking it off of a five plus. It's 4.5. Again, you've got to still half it. We've not done that yet. So it's not enough. It's not enough. I mean... I've kind of run out of units to use. I mean, I could have gone bigger, I suppose, and done the Norn Emissaries and things, but once you've already thrown in Swarm Lords with Tyrant Guard, and there's there's just not really enough individually for units to deal with this. So let's get on to the tips. Let's get on to the tips. What the heck do you do against Katan? First of all, as a Necron player, bring loads of Katan. <laughs> but as a Tyranid player, what do you do? Number one, you go in numbers. Don't go with one unit. You'll need multiple units in multiple phases. I mean, thankfully, the Necron Katarn cannot reanimate outside of their own command phase like other units can with the Undying Legion's protocol from the Awakened Dynasty. There's other ones, the Annihilation Legion can do it out of, out of a certain phase. I believe the Canoptic Court have one for the Canoptic units, but the Katarn can't. So that's your first tip. You need to have numbers. Don't just go with one, multiple units. Number two, damage one weapons cannot be halved. So ideally, you want to pump as many damage one shots as you possibly can or melee hits, of course, into the katan. Can't be rounded down. Number three, any odd number damage characteristics will round up. 
So if you've got damage 3 weapons, which there is a lot, like the Swarm Lord and Hive Tyrant, that's all damage 3. It becomes damage 2, so it's still bad for us, but it's not as bad as going from damage 4 to damage 2. Going from damage 3 to damage 2 is slightly better, because it rounds up. Number 4, Lethal Hits, to ignore that Toughness 11. He's a, he's a tank, isn't he? Toughness 11. We've not got much in terms of the Strength Department on the Tyranny side. Strength 9 is kind of where we sort of sit. There are some things like the Rupture Cannon, Focus Warp Blast from the Zone Throw, but yes, there are a few things that can go beyond, but most things are Strength 9 or less. So, Lethal Hits is good here. The Invasion Fleet will give you Lethal Hits against Monster Vehicles, he's a monster. There's also a Stratagem with the Adrenal Surge, to have Critical Hits on a 5+, plus. you can unlock that for free with a Hive Tyrant within 12, so get these combinations going. Number 5, if you can get Devastating Wounds, that's also good. We saw it with the Broodlord and the Gene Stealers. Maybe three full units of that could deal with it. But I mean, that is a, a, a massive point sink. But once they've dealt with it, they can spread out and do their own thing. Mortal Wounds, of course. I mean, there are a few ways of doing Mortal Wounds. It's not, it's not as common, but you can, do, you can find ways to do Mortal Wounds. Number seven, Detachment Rules. So I'll go through a few of them. Some of the detachments themselves aren't as good as others, but I've got Crusher Stampede to better your hit rolls and maybe wound rolls. Also, you've got the Monstrous Nemesis Enhancement to better your win roll as well. There's plenty of stratagems in there like Rampaging Monstrosity to reroll all your hit rolls in melee. Or Massive Impact to throw mortals on the charge, which is like Tank Shock for monsters. You've got the Unending Swarm Detachment, which has a lot of damage 1. There's a lot of stratagems like Swarming Masses to gain sustained hits. When you've got a large enough unit, you can then have critical hits on top of that on a 5+. So when you add that to sustained hits, that's good. The Assimilation Swarm, you've got stratagems like the Secure Biomass Stratagem to gain lethal hits, potentially critical hits on a 5+, plus again, if there's a Harvester unit in there. And the best stratagem for me is the Brood Guard Impulse. To th you just throw one Ripper at the Katarn, let the Katarn deal with it. No choice, he has to deal with it. Then for the rest of the game, a plus one to wound against that Katarn. That Ranger with melee, that's with a stratagem. Brood Guard Impulse. Synaptic ne Nexus. You've got the option of a plus one to hit in melee with a go to slaughter part of the detachment rule. There's strategies like the smothering shadow to throw mortal wounds after a failed battle shock, or irresistible will to reroll hit rolls and win rolls of a one. That's tip seven. As for tip eight, unit rolls. You've got the exocrine for the rerolls or hit rolls at, of one that range, army wide, or the neuro elixir for the plus one to wound if you get it to fail battle shock. Tip six plus, it is quite a good leadership, but there are ways of getting a minus one in there, isn't there? So yeah, that is my eight tips, along with a lot of maths and drama coming from Tyranid units, which they're just not doing enough. They're not doing enough. The Katans are probably some of the strongest, if not the strongest units in the game. Guys, I will see you tomorrow on the 9th of December. 